Hello and welcome to the second part of the FR Sky S6R setup video. Now in the first video I talked about some of the basic stuff that you needed to do, things like downloading and installing the latest Lua script onto the SD card of your radio running OpenTX 2.2 or later. We talked about flashing the S6R or the S8R, both of them will work with the same process. And then we spent quite a bit of time looking at how to set up the radio before quickly talking about plugging everything into the receiver. Now in this video we're going to pick up where we took off from that last video. So if you haven't already watched the first video I'll put a link here, go and have a look at that because if you omit any of the steps in this process you'll get to the other end and it probably won't work. As I said in the original video, this process has changed dramatically. It's not what's in the manual. Hopefully by the time you see this, the manual has been updated and it's a little bit more obvious. But this is just the process that I've gone through to set up a plane and do all the standard stuff like set servos to 90 degrees, incorporate the trims that you'll find when you fly the plane the first time and all that stuff with an S6R receiver. So I'm going to assume that you've seen the first video already. Again, if you haven't, stop this one, go and watch that one, and we'll crack on and pick up from where we left off. So if you remember, last time we'd finished setting up the radio, we'd set it up with channel 9 as the gain, channel 10 as a three-position switch to handle the modes, and we'd set up channel 12 with a three-position switch to help us do the calibration of the receiver. We'd install the receiver into the plane by plugging each of the servos and connections to the motor into the individual outputs as they are labelled. So the aileron connection to the aileron servos got plugged into the aileron output, the elevator into the elevator output, rudder into rudder, etc, etc. So now in part two, what we're first of all going to do is do all the stuff on the bench before we go out for our first test flight, just to make sure that all the control surfaces are working in the right way and that the S6R is also correcting in the right way too. So if you've had a small hiatus from the first video, I'd just double check that all your settings are still right, that the way you have it set up is correct with the airframe, with the simple mode is turned on, that the way you want auxiliary one and auxiliary two to work is set up as well, in case you don't want to use the connections for elevator two and aileron two, and we'll crack on with the setup with the plane. Now, first of all, point of order, make sure that the prop is off for this. You are going to have to blip the throttle to come out of some of the calibration pieces, and you don't want that throttle to start spinning the prop, particularly if you're doing this on the bench. So, big safety tip, remove the prop, make sure that's nicely out the way, and then you won't have any nasty accidents. So the first thing I did was then to, once we had all the connections done, power up the radio, power up the receiver, and just move each of the controls in turn using the high five system to make sure that the ailerons, elevator and rudder all moved in the right way as I move the controls. Now, each plane is very different, depends on how the servos are installed, where the servo horns are connected onto the control surface, so every plane will be different. So again, if you're not sure about how to set a plane up, there's a link in the description about setting up a standard plane in OpenTX and just follow along with that. So once I'd gone through that first step and I knew that all of the directions were okay, was to make sure all of the servos were set so they are at 90 degrees when the control surfaces are at their neutral position. Now the whole reason you do this is explained in that other setup video, but the short version is it gives you equal throws up and down. Now it might be on some planes you want that offset to be in a slightly different position. But I'd say for a starting point, uh, particularly if you're new to setting up fixed wing aircraft, go for the 90 degree position and that should give you equal throws up and down. Use the sub trim on the radios for the individual controls. So add the sub trim, go into the servo menu, use the sub trim menus to get the servos where you need them to be. At the moment, all I'm going to do is just line the control surfaces up manually and make sure all the servos are at 90 degrees. So from a geometry hardware point of view, the plane is set up well. And that's exactly what you'd do with any plane set up with OpenTX. So we haven't done anything particularly special so far. The next bit is very specific to the S6R. Now we've got those pieces set, we need to teach the S6R a couple of things. We need to show it what the attitude of the plane is. We also need to teach it what the middle position of the servos are. And we also need to teach it the limits of movement for each of those controls. Take hold of the switch that you've programmed for channel 12 and pop it into the middle position and then go out of that middle position and back to the middle position. So you go through that central position of the switch three times in three seconds. 
there will be a short delay. The blue light will come on the receiver and then it will enter calibration mode. Now you can also enter calibration mode by pressing the fail safe button on the receiver. But by this point, you've typically hidden the receiver deep away in the body of your craft. So if you can get away with just pressing the button, that just works just as well. Unfortunately, the way I've got it installed in here, it's really tricky for me to get to it. So the switch is a nice way to do it. Now I would recommend for doing this step, elevate the nose of the plane that you're setting up very slightly because you'll tend to find that the nose up attitude is how the actual model flies for level flight. While it's like that, make sure that you don't touch the throttle at all. You don't increase the throttle because that will finish the calibration. Move each of the controls to their maximum position so they're just short of any binding for the servos and the control service movement. This is setting the maximum deflection on each of the controls. So move the elevator, then the aileron, then the rudder. And once you're happy that everything is good, then raise the throttle very slightly so the motor starts to turn and that will also cancel out of the calibration. Once you're outside the calibration and you're back to the, the blue LED has gone off on the receiver, then just move all of your controls, make sure everything is free moving, everything's still moving in the right direction and that at the extreme positions for each of those controls, none of the servos are binding. Now at this point, you could change channel 12 over to back to that momentary switch. You don't want to accidentally enter calibration mode when you're flying because that will crash the model. So you either need to make sure that you're not going to touch that switch at all, or for safety, I'd probably recommend pop it back to the momentary switch for now for the urgent mode that is that kind of emergency self level. Last thing we need to do on this particular slide then is check the direction of the correction. So what we need to do here is put the model into either stabilized mode or auto level and then rock the model side to side. Now this is kind of explained to some reasonable diagrams in the existing manual and what you're looking for is for the control surfaces to try and correct the uncommanded movement. So if you rock the model from side to side, the wing that's rising, you should see the aileron on that wing push up to try and push that wing back down. Similarly, if you push the nose down and roll the plane forward, you should see the elevator come up. In stabilized mode, the motion is very, very slight. So you might have to put your fingers on it or just keep a very close eye on it as you're moving it. If you put it into auto level mode, then you'll find that the aileron and elevator movements get far more aggressive and it's much easier to see. If it isn't right, then go into the sxr.lua script on your radio and just reverse the particular direction that's wrong inside the Lua script. You don't have to save it or anything. As soon as you have changed it, it'll be instant. Then just confirm that that's absolutely the case. I'd turn the radio off, turn the receiver off, power everything up again, and then just double check that the high five controls on the radio work and then pop it in stabilized mode and rock the plane around and make sure all the corrective movements are too. I'd personally triple check that all the corrective movements are right because if you accidentally get one of these the wrong way around, as soon as you flick into stabilize or auto level mode in the air, things are going to get very exciting because rather than correct the uncommanded movement, it's actually going to increase it and the plane is going to just completely lose its mind. Now, if that does happen when we fly, it's not a complete disaster. As soon as you see something untowards happens, flick the mode switch into stabilize off and take over manual control. But I would just make sure that you don't have to worry about that. Okay, now we've got it set up. We're pretty much there. I would probably at this point reset the fail safes with all of the channel positions back to the receiver, just so if we do have a problem in the test flight that we're not going to have a problem. And let's go out to the field and do the last pieces. So the first part of the setup is exactly the same as with any other fixed wing model when you're setting it up. And that is you're going to fly the model in stabilization off mode and you're going to trim it using the trims on the radio to get straight and level flight at cruising speed. Now I have heard of some pilots who have bitten the bullet and just thrown the thing in auto level mode. And if all the corrective pieces have been done right and you've done every single step up to this point, you know what, that's probably going to work fine. But personally, I'd like to make sure that the plane flies okay in stabilization off mode. And then if you try any of the other modes and have an unexpected behavior, you can flick it out of the stabilize or auto level mode into stabilization off, be able to recover the craft and land it safely. 
So if you fly and you've got it all trimmed in stabilization off mode, then get a little bit of height and by all means have a go. Flick it into stabilized mode and do a little bit of flying around, see if it behaves okay. And if that behaves okay, then you can flick it into the auto level mode pay particular attention to the attitude of the plane in auto level. What you might find is the plane will fly level but will maybe sinking slightly or rising as well. Now there's something with a fixed wing called the angle of incidence and what you tend to find is that when a plane is flying along and not losing or gaining altitude you normally find that actually the nose needs to be up a little bit. So that's why we originally put the nose up slightly when we went through the self check and just double checking in this initial flight that that angle was correct. It might be close enough but you might find that it's sinking slightly so when you go through the self check next time we might need to raise the nose a little bit more. But once you've done all that land the plane and then go and rerun the self check to store the information. Now what the self check is actually doing is storing three bits of information. It's not only storing the middle channel position, which has changed now because we've just trimmed the plane. It also stores things like the limits, what level feels like, and also the attitude for the nose when it's flying in self level mode as well. So this is a great opportunity for us to take all of that information that we got from that flight we've just had and fix all those problems. Now we've done all that, make sure that you put channel 12 back into the momentary switch position because you either have to put it into that three position switch or use the bind button on the receiver to put it into the self check mode. Once you've got that set up, the next job is to go out and fly again. And this time you should be able to pop it into stabilization off, stabilize and auto level mode and have it flying beautifully in all orientations. If you find that in auto level mode there is a particular bias, maybe one wing drops or there's a bias that needs to be taken care of, then you can do that by changing the numbers in the Lua script and editing those about. But so far I've not found any pilots that really had to do that. If you get it right on the table and you calibrate it so the plane is level and the nose is slightly up at the right attitude for level flight where it isn't gaining or losing altitude, then you've probably got it pretty much dialed in. Last couple of things you can do, you can play around the gain control and just see where you want it. There is talk of some people are looking at maybe setting it as a default value. I think that's worthwhile considering or refining the range that the gain changes because what you'll find is depending on the speed of the plane, the gain that's needed to fly well is going to change a little bit. My recommendation for the gain is you want to turn the gain knob up until you see slight oscillation in the plane in the stabilized mode and then turn the gain down a little bit more so you see the oscillation stop and that's probably where it needs to be for the majority of the time. But watch out if you suddenly start to get lots of speed you might find that you need to turn the gain down a little bit. Last job here then is to rebind the receiver and go and reset the fail safe positions because obviously the middle channel positions will have changed because we've retrimmed it and you might also want to consider thinking about the modes that you want to turn on in the event of a fail safe for example you might want channel 12 to go into the high value position and turn on urgent mode and that way if you're in the middle of some aerobatic shenanigans with your plane and you're radio has a little bit of a problem then the plane will immediately snap straight and level. Now the danger with that of course is that if then you don't reconnect to the model it will fly away from you. So do spend a bit of time thinking about what you want to do with failsafe because with the S6R or S8R installed the plane can fly itself right out of your life. So in summary, last couple of final thoughts. Auto level, the way that works is it does limit the pitch and roll axis. So you can't get the nose too far up and down. You can't bank the model or do any barrel rolls or loops, which is perfect for a new pilot. You let go of the sticks and it'll fly straight and level. So that's a great aid for those pilots who are learning to fly. Or maybe you have a model that you want to give to a younger member of the family where there's less chance of them slamming it into the ground within two seconds of handing the radio over. Stabilize works well for smaller planes too. We've seen lots of different stabilization solutions in lots of planes on the channel recently. I've looked at the ZOHD DART Mini Talon Orbit and they have stabilizers fitted to standard. And stabilizers are really nice. They just help the plane behave like a much bigger model. Urgent mode is great. Flicking that channel 12 switch, if you can remember to do it in time, will save your bacon and seems to work pretty much regardless of orientation. 
obviously making sure that you've got enough height for the plane to pull itself straight and level and that you've got the throttle running too. This product works really well, but in my opinion, it's just too blooming hard to set up. Some of the people that will benefit the most from this product are going to be pilots in the early stages of their career. But in order to set it up properly, you need at least 18 months experience with the OpenTX Tyrannus radio in order to go through these steps and come out the other side. There have been lots of comments on these couple of videos from people lamenting about how blooming complicated this whole process is. And I think FR Sky have kind of missed the point of why someone would be interested in this. They've done an amazing job in creating a technically capable stabilizer, but they've made it too hard to set up. If you look at stabilizers from people like Horizon Hobby, look at the ones that are pre-installed in things like the ZOHD models that I've just talked about, they are far easier to set up. And this is just going to appear too daunting for an awful lot of pilots who would benefit hugely from setting it up. But hopefully these videos have helped. And lastly, before I finish the video, I need to give a huge shout out to a couple of pilots that have been fantastic in helping me test this stuff and sharing their experiences because I was interested in getting some feedback on this process and also getting some additional stories and war stories of what it's like to set up on lots of different fixed wing models. So a big shout out to Ralph at RCDIY. He has a lot more information on his website. So go and have a look on there. And also a big shout to Martin from Aerosport RC Club. That's a radio control club in Chicago, USA. Martin has been great. He's kind of shared some of his experiences. And that leads me to the final point. One of the things that he noticed in one of the planes that they were testing at their club was that one plane in particular didn't seem to behave very well with it at all. And it turned out that the prop was very badly balanced on that particular fixed wing model. So be aware of that. This S6R and S8R is actually a little flight controller that you're putting inside your model. It's as susceptible to vibration and interference as any other flight controller that would use in a multi-rotor or any other craft that I've looked at on the channel. So if you're going to add one of these into your model, make sure that it is strongly secured so it's not going to rattle around or move inside the model because any movement of the receiver will be felt as though it's a movement in the entire plane and spend a bit of time making sure that you're removing as much vibration as you possibly can to give it the best chance of performing well for you. So thank you again for everybody that's got involved and supported with these videos. Hopefully now you feel a little bit more confident. You can go out and set one of these things up. In summary, it works great. I'm quite impressed with how well it works, but I'm very disappointed that it's as complicated as it is. And I hope FR Sky put a bit of time and effort into the next revision of the software, documentation and Lua script to make this far easier for newer pilots to get set up on their fixed wing models. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.